Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And now that the entry level MacBook Pro has been updated and a lot of people out there in the community have been purchasing one, I thought now would be a great time to go over some simple tips and tricks for that new MacBook Pro. Now, yes, don't get me wrong. A lot of these tips and tricks will work on any Mac. We are using Mac OS and a lot of these tips and tricks are obviously software based. So if you have an iMac, if you have a Mac mini or the MacBook Air, a lot of these tips and tricks you can also use. The reason why I labeled this tips and tricks for the MacBook Pro is because there are some touch bar specific tips and tricks in this video. So if you are not interested in those, you can just skip over them. But even if you own another Mac, this video should be helpful for you, especially if you wanna brush up your knowledge on how to use your Mac more efficiently or for some other tips and tricks that maybe you hopefully didn't know about. So let's start off the video with some of those specific tips and tricks for the touch bar on the MacBook Pro. So for a lot of people out there who are new to the touch bar, some of the things that Apple implemented might seem like a step backwards. For example, if you are to tap the volume or the brightness buttons on the MacBook Pro, you'll see that you go into this slider view. Now, this can be a bit of a downgrade if you were just looking to tap on the brightness or the volume to just quickly change the intensity of that certain value. However, there is a simple way to change those increments by one. All you have to do is take your finger and then swipe against that certain area and you'll see that the volume or the brightness increases or decreases by one. And in some ways, this is just a quicker way to increase or decrease the volume or the brightness on your MacBook Pro. Now, while we're on the topic of volume and brightness adjustments with the touch bar, there is also another way to do this even faster. So when most people go to increase or decrease the volume, they'll probably press on the volume button and then just wait for the slider to appear and then go ahead and drag it to adjust it. However, you can do this even faster by just dragging as soon as you touch the volume or the brightness indicator. As you can see, there's no need to wait for the animation to finish for that slider to form. You can just quickly drag your finger along the volume bar and then you can just drag it all the way to the left to decrease it all the way or drag it all the way to the right to increase it all the way. Now, while we're still on the topic of the touch bar, there is a way to change the icons that appear on the touch bar if you don't like the defaults that are currently available when you start using your MacBook Pro. To customize your touch bar, just go into System Preferences, click on Keyboard, and then click on Customize Touch Bar. On the screen, you'll notice a bunch of different things you can put in the touch bar, like Do Not Disturb, Night Shift, Show Desktop, Screen Saver, AirPlay, and many more. To customize the touch bar, just simply take one of the items you would like on the touch bar and then drag it to the bottom of the screen. Then you'll see it appear on the touch bar. If you expand the touch bar, you'll also notice that you get even more options. So now with my custom touch bar setup, I have easy access to screen recording and screenshots. I can also easily select an AirPlay source, go right into my notification center, or toggle Do Not Disturb. Okay, this next tip is how to rename a bunch of different files at once. I find this especially useful for you photographers out there. If you're importing photos from an SD card, you know that if you take a lot of photos, those can quickly become unorganized and cluttered, especially with those weird file names that you get from your cameras. So what you're gonna wanna do is select all the photos or files, right click and then hit rename to items. So you'll be greeted with a couple different ways to do this. So the first way is to find and replace the text. So for example, all of these photo files have DSC in the beginning of them. So I can type in DSC and then I can replace them with something like dog pictures. And it finds all of the things with DSC and replaces them with the word dog pictures. However, I prefer to use the formatting option. This is especially useful for photos. So for example, this is from a dog show. So I'm gonna name this dog show pictures and then we're going to reformat them with the numbers starting at one. Once I click rename, you can see that all of the photos on this SD card get renamed to dog pictures and then have a numbered order. And for me personally, when I do take a lot of photos on a camera, when I am importing them on an SD card, I find this to be a really, really useful way to just quickly organize all of those photos so I don't have a bunch of different folders with just random photo file names sitting on my computer. Speaking of being organized, what if you have a really messy desktop? Of course, you can always sort these files the traditional way by going into view and then sorting by name, date, or something else. However, I much prefer to use a newer Mac feature that debuted with Mac OS Mojave to sort all of these files, and that is the Stacks feature. 
So you can either access this by going into view or right clicking on your desktop and hitting use stacks. So once you click use stacks, you can see that all the things on our desktop are now arranged into neat categories. So for example, if we click on the applications, we can see all of the applications on our desktop. If we click on images, it'll expand out and show all of the images that were on our desktop. And the same for movies or other different file types that aren't even present on this current desktop. You can even arrange this further by right clicking again and then grouping the stacks by kind, date last open, date added, date modified, date created, or your custom tags. Ever since Stacks launched with macOS Mojave, I've been using it on my Mac and I'm not even gonna show you the file system on my iMac because it is a complete and utter mess and Stacks does help me keep control and organized of all these different file types I keep on my computer. Another issue with organization is when you're trying to have two windows opened at once and then you wanna have them dragged over so you can see both of them at once. Of course, you can do this the traditional method by clicking them, dragging them along to each side, resizing them all by yourself, but there is a faster way to do this already built into Mac OS, and this is actually a little bit hidden. Apple doesn't really do a good job of servicing this feature to you. And this is to enter a split view on Mac OS. So all you do to access this is long click on the green button in your window, and then you'll see that we get a nice little area where it highlights, and then you can pick that and then pick a second application to go over in the other window and then you quickly get access to two windows side by side. This works very similar to how the iPad does split view and the controls are pretty much the same, so you can drag the slider along to make one app bigger or smaller. And this is a great way to maintain your focus. So say you wanted to do some research and take notes at the same time, you can have the browser open and then a notes field open as well. Another great tip on Mac OS is to make sure you're using hot corners. To access hot corners, go into system preferences, click on desktop and screensaver, then click on screensaver, and then in the bottom right, you'll see the option for hot corners. So obviously the screen has four corners you can customize. And what this does is when you mouse your cursor over to one of these corners, you can launch a custom quick action. And you can see as I bring my mouse cursor over to each corner, I am getting these custom quick actions to go into launch pad, launch notification center, access the desktop, or to actually put my display to sleep. This next tip I use all the time on Mac OS, and that is to open files by dragging them to applications on the dock. So obviously if you're using Mac OS, you probably have your favorite applications already in your dock. So all you have to do is take the application you wanna open, select it, drag it over to the application you wanna use on the dock, and it's that simple. I use this feature all the time, especially for photos, because I like to use different photo editors for different things so I have the files ready to go and then I can just quickly drag them over to the corresponding app on the dock. This works even better for me when I'm accessing it from the downloads folder on the dock and then I have all of my different photos and then I could just drag them over to the application of choice. For this next Mac trick, you're going to need either an iPhone or an iPad. So obviously our Macs are great at a lot of things. However, one of the biggest weaknesses of a Mac compared to something like an iPad is that it lacks a dedicated rear facing camera. And sometimes that can be a hassle, especially now that we're used to our iPhones and iPads, they have cameras on the front and back. And sometimes like if you're in a note taking application, maybe you just wanna take a photo of something really quickly or scan a receipt or document. Well, thankfully, if you have an iOS device handy, you can use the camera on your iPhone or iPad to directly import from your camera to one of your Mac applications. So if you're in an application like Pages, all you have to do is right click and you'll see the option to import from iPhone or iPad. Now you can either take a photo or scan a document. So let's take a photo. And you'll see all of a sudden the camera app on my iPhone actually opens up. So you just simply take the photo with your iPhone, hit use photo, and all of a sudden the photo that you just took on your iPhone is already there, ready to be used in that application. You don't have to import it or airdrop it from your iPhone, it just magically appears there. And this feature just really highlights one of the great things about being in that Apple ecosystem and owning multiple Apple products. They just work so simply and so easily together. Okay, and this last tip is actually a tip that helped make this video possible. And that is to record the screen on your Mac. So to do this, all you have to do is hit Command Shift 5, and then you'll see the capture screen options pop up. Now you can either do a simple screenshot where you capture the entire screen, or maybe you wanna select a certain window 
or maybe even just a certain portion of the desktop. However, the feature I find really handy with this is actually the ability to screen record my Mac screen. So again, I can either record the entire screen, a certain part of a window, or I can select a portion of that screen to be recorded. And if you're trying to do something like a tutorial, you can even access the built-in microphone on your MacBook and then have a voiceover going with your screen recording. All right, everyone, and that's gonna do it for this tips and tricks video. Hopefully you found one that you didn't know about before and hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite tip or trick was. If this video helped you out, make sure you give it a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see See you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.